here we are bottom of the smash mountain i would like to thank all my all my supporters over at patreon.com slash bsm pod i would like to give a special shout out to my senior producers we got ventus official we have my mom and dad we have pk Smokey. shout outs to eternal project thank you so much for all for supporting me and i would like to introduce our guest for this evening we have god touch who hails from pa not currently in pa but hails from the pa region I had a lot of no pause tournament events and I looked at a few sets this evening. God touch, just watching some of your Fox play. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. And I also wanted to give a shout outs to the person who made sure that this happened. I want to give shout outs to at SSBM kite on twitter who said great episode with gene dalla now get god touch on and i said you got it i will get god touch on and that was several months ago so i feel so bad but i'm so glad that we are (laughs) we're here now we made it (laughs) yeah we made it we got there so i always love hearing about how people get into melee so that'll be my first question to you god touch how did you get into melee uh so i paid project m I played 3.0 when it first came out. That was like my first competitive game. And then they came out with Project M like 3.5 and they made it so Fox couldn't shine spike anymore. And I was like, <laughs> this is it. Fox is the worst character. It's over. So I was like, I got to start playing Melee. And that's how I got into Melee. And because because of all the different patches through the realm of Project M, you have the ability to complain to the devs and say, I just don't like this about XYZ character. I don't like Ganondorf floating, or I don't like how broken Mewtwo is in this game. Like, why is Mewtwo, like, so good all of a sudden? Or Roy, for, for that matter. Now, I have to generalize because I am not as deep in the Project M sauce or in Project Plus, although always big shout-outs to Project Plus and the Project M such a cool pro uh, I've seen that too many times such a cool idea and execution on a community that deserves to exist alongside of everybody else in the smash sphere so i love the project plus community so i'm interested in hearing what your current relationship with it, with that game is if you're playing project plus at all or if it's just strictly melee nowadays so I've been, I've been kind of doing the work in band hustle recently but i but prior to that i was playing a decent bit and I'm working on picking up Zero Suit Samus in P+, because she's broken and hot, and I want to be here. So that's the all pros as to what to play. And then I was, like, not too motivated to compete in Melee recently. I was, like, mostly just competing in doubles events. But then I went to, like, a New England tournament, like, last week, and I, like, almost beat a bunch of ranked players. And I was like, well, I was like, maybe we could do some stuff here. I was like, maybe we should actually put some work in. I'm interested in hearing about some of these tournaments up in the New New England area. If you're, to my knowledge, uh, on the northern side of it, that means that it's probably hard to get to events in Massachusetts. But I don't hear a whole lot about the stuff in Vermont or in Maine or other places that are up there. My geography is shaky but i'm interested in hearing about what's it like on the northern side of new england as compared to the kind of dangling nearby new york side of the region so the the main scene are like absolute homies they're like they were very like immediately like open and like welcoming and like made me feel at home uh it it was very funny because i went to my first like mate tournament in maine it was called buffered lobster roll and I entered his various crustaceans and got seated last. <laughs> <laughs> it was mean to whoever you had to play first round. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think I got like third at that tournament. I lost to uh, Calvar and j But like, I just thought that was super funny. And the person was like, yeah, I didn't know that you were like a ranked Philly player. <laughs> um, and then from that, from that, because I was the highest placer who was not currently invited to the main invitational, which I didn't know existed until I went. I got invited to Lobsterland, and that was also very funny. Lobsterland was more of a heartbreaker, though, because I just like lost a bunch of really close sets. Ah, oh, it sucks, because you just go, I need to turn it around, and then you are still in the same exact spot a few sets later. That's unfortunate. Was it I sort of like won. a round-robin approach, kind of like a mini-summit, or... Oh, yeah, so it was round robin into bracket. Yeah. And I almost won, like, three game five best of fives, or game five reverse three O's. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. The, one of them was sick. I was playing versus Dr. Lame, and uh, they had beat me on, like, Yoshi's and, like, Battlefield. 
I don't know, the Yoshi's twice and like Fountain, I think I started for some reason. And then they take me to FD game five and I force talk them. <laughs> but they're like walking me the rest of the set. <laughs> <laughs> So I was actually going to ask you about the lobster buffered lobster roll, because unfortunately a lot of your mentions on Twitter, and I don't usually do this, but I, I, I haven't been able to talk to you a whole lot leading up to this interview. Right. So I thought, well, what's a, what's a, what's a name search? Like if I, if I just put in God touch, what's that going to pull up? And it pulls up melee stats where the tweet is J not Juan buffered, blo- uh, buffered lobster roll beating Calvar and God touch. And then there's, uh, shirtless god touch then there's a Link Swinks tweet shout outs to Link Swinks beat god yeah. touch at tonight's event and then a Dawson tweet beat god touch at this event and then <laughs> somebody else <laughs> tweeting beat god touch at this event there's a lot of people who are just name dropping and being like I beat god touch like <laughs> this is very mean it feels like are there a lot I don't think there's a lot of tweets where somebody like Zane tweets yeah I won pound beat hbox twice today <laughs> there's yeah. not a lot of those kind of tweets and I feel like you're kind of of on the on the wrong end of this of the spectrum where people are just coming at you with the the little bit of a of a of a disrespect i don't know how many of them are adding you on twitter when they when they win over you and go like i beat at god touch ssb this is the greatest night of my life but like what are your what how do you deal with how do you deal with tournament performance i should say as a whole whether you win or lose uh, okay, so that's funny. I didn't know that people in the movie are tweeting about me saying that they beat me. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, tournament performance is a very difficult thing. It's something that I, after I got ranked top 50 in PM, I struggled with a lot because then I put, like, there was more expectation and there was more of this, like, perception of being, like, consistently a good player when you're ranked. Mm-hmm. Because people expect you to perform at that level. Opposed to, like, for me in P+, I was only, like, sporadically performing at that level. Like, I would beat, like, a top five player, but then I would, like, lose to someone you've never heard of. So, like, that made my relationship with competition interesting. And I got into this cycle where I wouldn't practice because I was like, it's it's not worth my time because I'm not going to be that good again. And then I'd still compete. And then I'd see how good I was doing and then get mad I didn't do better. But then I would go, but you didn't practice. So, like, why are you mad? And instead, now I just, like, have released from that cycle. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to practice because I enjoy competing and it's a fun time. <laughs> That's a wonderful art part of part of the arc to be. So is the working stuff the reason why you're up in New England now? Is that what took you up there? Yeah. So my brother's best friend in college opened up a coffee shop and mm. uh, I was needed somewhere to stay over the summer because my lease in Westchester PA had ended. And it was cheaper for me to rent a room out on Peaks Island in Maine than it was to find housing in like Westchester or like Philly. Right. So, and there was like a guaranteed job. I got to work at a cafe. And then it's been like pretty fruitful besides that because there's just like tons of work on the island. Okay. So, this is really cool because this sort of thing can't happen to me at this point. I'm, I'm married and I have two children. So, the, the, the whole thing about, oh, there's this, there's this place where if you go to it, you'll have a job and you'll have a, a couch or a bed to crash on and just, mm-hmm. just like, screw it. Why not? Let's do it. I could do something like that. So I'm interested in hearing some of the, some of the fun parts of it or, or drawbacks or however the experience has been so far, just all of a sudden one day you're in Westchester and then the next day you're all the way up there in Maine. Uh, it's, it's definitely interesting. It, it, I think it gave me a really like, strong sense of freedom because i was like wow i was like i really organized i was able to organize this thing where i moved like nine hours like seven hours probably like seven hours away from my home and like completely like reestablished like a a system and like a cycle of living that like keeps me happy and lets me like try to get move somewhere forward in life so i was just like immensely proud of myself for being able to do that um and it just you just feel really free you're like oh I, i did this i can do anything so are you interested in trying to find another job in a random place in the u.s where the homies are saying come over here and we'll get you set up is that is that something that you would consider or are you trying to get back down to pa so i'm moving to philly for a year i think i don't know i'm trying to figure so my plan is i'm trying to do an apprenticeship for computer science and then there's an internship that goes along with that where you get placed to a different part of the country depending on how you performed so that's kind of what I'm looking at, and I want to see okay. what, kind of where I get placed. So, yeah, I want to try to find like a new a new location after that, and to try that out.
But while you're down here in Philly, will be will we be able to see you challenge all, you know the established Philly players as per usual and the up and comers as well? Or are you going to be like really focused on computer? Did you say computer science? Yeah, like software engineering. Mm -hmm. Software engineering. Um. Yeah. So Kem lives in Philly. So I don't know if he actually graduated. Yet. He might have. Um. I haven't. Me and Kem uh, both started in, like competing in. Uh, Philly at the same time, our freshman year, but then all of the COVID and stuff have happened. So right. like, and I didn't stay on like the same four year path for college. So I have no idea where he is in his finished <laughs> path. But anyway, my point is I'm going to hunt down Kevin and play him because we used to play all the time. You know, I should look up the melee stats, the PG stats, melee rankings, because I'm very certain I saw Kem on that list. So let me yeah. go ahead and pull that up. And I just want to hear, I guess you could talk about Philly in general, since you played there for long enough you could certainly speak to this about what it's like to go to gene doll events moosh events and uh i get, oh also mpt because you didn't mm -hmm. you also went to and no pause tournament events as well so since i haven't gone to any of these although i really want to i i live in lancaster pa which is an okay. hour and a half away from philly it's in lancaster county obviously so uh we're we're, we're close but it's hard to get away for, for for a tournament on a weeknight is what I'm getting at. So I really wanted yeah. to go to Creed, for instance, that B-Bats won a month and a half, two months ago. I wanted to go to that kind of stuff. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, the, for the next Creed event, that sort of thing. But I'm just interested in hearing how your experience was being in, in that competitive scene for as long as you were. So the Philly competitive scene, I think, has a lot of like, like kind of like grit to it that's not real like we're all kind of like a little bit jerks about the game but it's it's in the most like it's like why are you mad about a video game but it's also like everyone in the room takes the video game very seriously and clearly is trying at the video game <laughs> so like there's like there's like that great dynamic there um but like we're just constantly all clowning on each other for everything like the entire pr is just like is like constantly talking shit like there is some like there is like uh, I catch the least L's, I feel like, if people think I'm sick. So that's generally pretty good. But, like, Dawson gets clowned on constantly. Like, Dimension gets clowned on constantly. And it's mostly to the fault of Young Neil. Young Neil's the main instigator in, in these plot lines. So I want to make sure that I'm getting Kem's ranking right on the... This is this is happening as in today, yesterday, tomorrow, the top 10 comes out for, for Melee. And Kem debuted at 38 in the world for, for Melee. Well, what's your like immediate reaction to that? That like that like makes sense. Like I don't actually follow Kem's results well enough to know mm -hmm. how he like should be ranked in the top 50. Like I don't know if that's low or high for how he's been performing. But like just knowing like like just knowing how he is and seeing him play like it like was obvious that during the beginning of the pandemic that he was going to be like a top 50 player so if you're gunning for chem then do you think that it's realistic to consider in the future a god touch top 50 player for melee and you say in the in the in the in the next year or so like is that a possibility or are you trying to be as realistic about that with yourself as you can like where where do you feel with trying to project how well you want to play how how high you want to go so when i first went to philly i was winning tournaments over like dawson and cam and when i first played dawson the first game i played him i forced stopped him and i still trade sets with dawson now i haven't played Cam. like andrews probably is like way better than me right now and would probably smoke me like i have no doubt about that in my mind but like there was a point in time where we were going back and forth and there I know how many hours Andrew puts in and I know how many hours I put in. So if I can, I like kind of like decrease that, uh, like gap. discrepancy in the ratio, yeah. <laughs> I, feel like I, can, I feel like I can close the gap. <laughs> but either way, it's really cool because I, I want to eventually get out to Philly events and, and meet all these players. There was a, there was a Baltimore event that I went to that some Philly players were supposed to go to. It just didn't end up working out. There was a, uh, COVID breakouts, something, something. And so I think all the Philly players just played it safe, stayed home. But uh, either way, it's, it's interesting to hear about this scene since I'm so close to it. And yet I haven't, I, ha I just haven't gone out to an event. I'm very interested in the Millersville university events that are coming up again, that we're going to be having in Lancaster. I'm very excited for that. Okay. So I usually have 
Patreon questions, and I th- probably put that out a little late in the game with adding everybody in the Discord, or I didn't do the at everyone, <laughs> but I did the at roles, and I did not get anything. So what I'll be interested in hearing in uh, from you now is from more more Project Plus stuff, just because I don't, I I always love hearing stuff about the game but I don't hear about it super, super often. So do you know God of the Mod? Do you know that Mango does that on his channel and they have really big players come out for that? I have heard of it. I have, I have known it exists. I have not watched a single one. <laughs> one time my boy Yona was on there. That was sick. That's I didn't cool. watch it when he was on there. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested in hearing if you're like trying to make it happen, or if it's just more of like a chill. Like you know, if uh, I think it's oh, no. uh, Saber who's who's a big part of getting that all set up, but you're you're not trying to have your name called or anything. No, I'm not trying to get on God of the Mod. I'm trying to get like top ten though in in P plus at some point. Like I feel like I when I was doing it with Fox, I was working way too hard for consideration of like how, like how bad some of Fox's matchups are in that game. And then I'm from Pennsylvania, and there's just no scene here. Like, mm. like there's just there, and I lived in, in like northeastern Pennsylvania in Stroudsburg. My oh, I know where Stroudsburg is. Yeah, <laughs> my local was 45 minutes away in Scranton. Oh no, <laughs> we had like two Zeldas. Like, why do we have two Zeldas? Like, you know, like so it just wasn't a great, it wasn't a great place for growth. Now. But like, I, I really feel confident going forward with P Plus that I can like become like a top 10 player. Is it because the New England scene is stronger for P plus right now, or is it just because when you go back to Philly, you'll be in like Philly has enough of a Project Plus scene for you to get good good matches in? Philly has a really strong uh, Project Plus scene. So, like our best player is is uh, Ronan or like Mister Gimmick. Uh, we just like if he's like playing well, rotates on like any of us with like every character. It's Ooh. it's insane. But he's pretty inconsistent at the same time though, because like. It, it, he's, he's one of my best friends and he's in an interesting arc right now so uh in in the fire in the forge being cra- crafted into the best player ever <laughs> and then then there's dimension who is the villain of the story uh because uh dimension is the melee player who plays knuckles now and then we'll snipe the tournament sometimes and then we have soap soap super dope uh he plays knuckles too um He's like actually making waves. Like he's beating tons of people on like online netplay discords and like kind of washing them. And then I'm probably like fourth best right now, I'd say. Uh, because my ZSS just kills itself at least once a game. And that makes it really hard to win. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, she's trying to learn to fly. Like she doesn't have her wings yet. <laughs> So then when you get when you get those moments in where you do everything right and it's just super hype that's like like an amazing feeling that I I don't know do you feel when you play Melee Fox and you do something really cool does it ever feel slightly like I didn't earn this as much as like a game and watch player did for zero to death like does it well, ever feel like that No no so that's crazy right cuz uh I just played Glock in my Toyota like a couple like a couple days ago and it went game 5 and I like got so tilted when I lost when I lost because he up threw me and he missed the timing on the the uh his nair his parachute but in pm you can play with tap jump off mm-hmm. so I was holding up so I got a buffer I got a tap jump and I jumped into it and I was like this is literally the worst thing ever <laughs> so no gamer watch mains do not observe or earn anything <laughs> that's an illusion <laughs> nothing's earned it's it's very simple. Everything I do is earned and cool. Everything my opponent did is lame and uh, given to them for free. <laughs> and, like... Has anybody ever described you as a villain, or is it just purely Dimension? Uh, I don't, Dylan's not even the villain. It's just funny to poke fun at him. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be Dawson. Dawson might be the real villain. But the... wait, of of melee or of uh, Project Plus? Oh no, of Philly. Philly, gotcha. Dimension's definitely the villain of of uh, of P plus. How many times have you seen a Cam versus Dawson set? I don't really watch the game that much, so I've probably seen like five. Okay, but that's still a high amount because that's like a big meme. I've I've heard of Cam versus Dawson memes. I've made so I call them deep cams, which are like it's like deep cut cam memes. There's one I made of him where it's his picture from his high school graduation. 
and yeah, I put a pair of stunner shades on it, and then I overlaid the tweet that was like, if you ever did you have you have you ever like almost got top 50 but then the pandemic happened and you're unsure if you're gonna be able to keep playing the game because of your hands and you really just wanted to be ranked this year it's like overlaid on top of that and there's like wiggly images so yeah i like i'm very into the chem dawson fandom <laughs> even if you don't necessarily uh catch catch the catch the games <laughs> yeah. so you said that you don't watch the game a whole lot i i watch the game uh, enough like I'll, I'll catch these these bigger events so this past weekend was wave dash and that was hungry box versus jmook in grand finals do you did you know anything from that event he threw a chair yes <laughs> that's so fucking insane because <laughs> a lot of people are tweeting this out like hey if somebody throws a chair what do you do you ban them <laughs> like, you don't let them come back right jamu should have ripped his shirt off <laughs> <laughs> Uh, somebody, uh, somebody, or a few people have said that Jmook's not the kind of person to like start or stir things up a whole lot. But Jmook got the mm -hmm. Joker moment tweet in. You know, Hungerbox is throwing the chair, and he's got that dejected look on his face in the picture, and he just captures it. This is my Joker moment. Like that's so perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's 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 at least the minimum that you got to do. I feel I feel bad for anybody who loses a game ten. You know, it's just a hard fought grand final set. It's the end of your day or the end of a tournament, and that's what happens. Like that's ultimately something that you have to. It'll kind of live with you longer than the average result does, right? I'm interested mm -hmm. in hearing from you. Have you ever won or lost a game ten? Yeah, uh, that's happened a couple times. I think my favorite game 10 was this was like the beginning of like my really good string of performances i was working as a camp counselor at a quaker farm camp and i'd been doing that for about a month so i hadn't played at all like i hadn't like been on a computer that whole time uh and there was a tournament in pennsylvania called homie fest and it was like our reunion tournament like everyone who like used to play like the younger kids like had gone off or like are going off to school or had gone off to school. Like I was like one of the younger ones who hadn't gone off yet. And like the older people like had stopped playing as much. Uh, so we had this reunion tournament and I got seated like, like eighth or like ninth, even though like when we were all playing, I was number one and like undefeated versus people. So that, so I was like, I got to show these guys what's going on. <laughs> and then I, I lose to like my bracket demon battery, like, like, somewhere in the like in the middle of the bracket so remember i had to go on like a, a pretty decent losers run mm -hmm. i had to be like my friend anthony i was tags able who like i used to go back and forth with and then umbra who used to be like the best player in my region and then i went game 10 with uh with battery and i remember this very specific moment where like i'm playing against him on fountain and it's like we both i come down from the respawn platform and i'm like he's been rolling in and then i like get a combo in him on him and then he like rolls in at the last moment i up smash and i'm like kill him and i'm like holy shit that's the game 10 <laughs> <laughs> that's like i've been playing i've played nine games or just a dude i know where he's gonna go <laughs> yes you got your one moment yeah that reminds me. It reminds me of Mango talking about like the the roll read rest against Armada. He's like, I just knew it. I just knew it in my heart. He that's how he describes mm -hmm. it in the uh, the new documentary. That's really cool though. You want a game ten? Poor battery. Is this the same battery mm -hmm. who plays volleyball professionally now, more or less? Yes. Oh my, my gosh, dog. I've had battery on the podcast. That's cool. Just want to make yeah, sure. So cool. <laughs> just gonna be trying to go to the to the Olympics in a couple of years on the volleyball team, not a big deal. <laughs> I mm. mean, I don't know how close batteries actually is to doing that. I want to be fair and realistic, but uh, like, yeah. that's a goal that battery has like go to the Olympics on the volleyball, on the men's volleyball team. That's, that's crazy. He's one of the most motivated people I've ever met. So like, I have absolutely no doubt that as long as he stays dedicated to the plan he creates for himself, he'll do it. Let's go. Like, Let's like, go. Like, Oh, so the other, I think I have moments like that a lot because I'm a big reverse 3 hour. Like, I'm, I'm a big adapter. I, be, I get mad when I be losing, so I'm like, I got to stop this. <laughs> like, I got to find a way to figure this out because it's not by me right now. So um, I, like, have a bunch. I have, like, lots of, like, moments I feel like where I've been like, oh, like, this one thing clicked, and that's what won me the set. Like, I was playing versus Faye, uh, I think our most recent set, and I lost, like, two on Yoshi's, and I normally win on Yoshi's, like, so much so that Faye, we used to start Yoshi's, and then Faye doesn't start Yoshi's versus me anymore. Right. And that's their favorite stage. 
um, and I'm playing like blue or green fox, and I switch to red, and then I realize that they've been messing up. Like every time I've done up throw, they've teched in place, and then I've up smashed them, and they they tech in place, and then that other up smash they roll in. And I was like, huh. I was like, that's like three things I just know is gonna happen. So it's I would wild. Just do that. Yeah, I would just do that for like every start up of the combo, and then if they di out, you can just get like back air, and if they di in, you can get like shine shine back air. But they're off stage every time at about seventy, right? So like, and I can just do that every stock when I don't know what to do because I know Faye's gonna do it. And that's how I got like the reverse 3 0. And that's how I ended like the, it was like game five, last hit, last stock. I don't know the last last stock. Like I was at like 100 or something. No, I think I was up two stocks. There was a different set that I was up 100 and I cheesed Faye. Faye, Faye, I'd be robbing Faye consistently. (laughs) Uh, I like just like actually like just like whopped them after switching to red and like really recognizing this one thing. Are you the best adapter in melee in the world? No, probably not. Who's better at adapting? Uh, I'm trying. To, that's actually I'm pretty good at it, considering like, I do play P plus matchups that I've never played before, and I, just, I can like figure it out pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, and like, to I'm, be fair to you, you don't watch melee constantly, so it's not like you could say, "Oh, well, you know, I watch you know ten or twenty hours a week, so I could tell you like there's bajillion players who are better." No, it's I, yeah. reverse three O's, very hype, very awesome. So when you, when, especially when you get to be that player, it must be very cool. I've not done a, well, I haven't really won a whole lot of melee yet myself. I'm, I'm still very bad at the game, but very cool to hear how it is possible for someone to go down 2-0 and then just to go. All I need to do is, is do a couple of adjustments here and notice a few patterns and then I can, I can turn this around quick. Sometimes it can, it can actually be like this thing I'm doing recently that's like very silly, but I think because I find it funny, it's even more effective. Um, I try to use like a trigger word to like get me to focus to just play well, like not even adapt, but just like get myself into the zone to make good decisions and mm. like move properly. Uh, but recently, I've just been saying I got that dog in me, and I say that it makes me smile, and I'm, I'm ready to play because I got that dog in me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, you were talking about Homie Fest earlier. That was the melee. That was what was from a melee or uh, homie fest bracket where you were playing J Flex in grand finals, and it was a that three. Was homie fest too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So that was a three zero in J Flex's favor. Who you know, mm-hmm. obviously, <laughs> like a top fifty player easily. I think J Flex was ranked like thirty six or something in the summer mm-hmm. rankings that just came out today and yesterday. So, congrats to J Flex on that. I'm just interested in hearing about when you go up against someone who you say to yourself, I have to be realistic. This is probably a better player than me. Not that you want to immediately say to yourself, I'm going to lose this set. I'm just interested in hearing when you play against someone who would be the, the favorite, or if you're coming out of losers going into grand finals against the person sitting in winners, what your mindset is. You can't, you probably don't want to immediately use your go-to line to start game one, but like, what's that feeling like when you go into that kind of a situation? So I was actually up 1-0 on J Flex going into that set. Mm. So like I was pretty like I was like J I knew at that time because he was getting really good results then that J Flex was better than me. But I was like I'm going to fuck up J Flex. I was like <laughs> it is not there's a non-zero chance that I just roll J Flex today. <laughs> um, so like like because like, when I, I played him when I played him pre-pandemic I like like two owed him pretty solidly I think uh, like, at least it didn't feel stressful at all the whole time I was playing him. Um, and it was funny because I had asked him for friendlies like four years earlier and he was like, I'm only doing money matches. And I was like, I'm like, I'm like, maybe it was like 15. I was like, I'm 15 or 14, dude. I like don't have money. Like, I just want to learn how to play the game. And I heard you're good. And he was like, I'm only doing money matches. I was like, you don't want to help the community grow. I was like, you don't help this kid like get better at the game. Like that's not, it's not your style. So when I beat him, it was so fucking funny. I was like, you could have prevented this. <laughs> So, but I think when I, when I do play against players that are better than me, I, I actually, I think I do better versus players that are better than me opposed to players that are worse than me. Oh, that's Philly to the core. Let's go. God touch. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I, like if someone's supposed to be better than me, I'm generally like, but how good are you? But how good are you really? <laughs> Fuck around. Find out, right? Fuck around. Find out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So we're getting up to 30 minutes here and we want to get you okay. going. So I guess... 
if you're trying to do stuff, trying to make sure that the people know where to find you, you could do that. However you want to roll us out here, any closing thoughts, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, my, my closing thought is this is my advice for improvement. It's, you got to consider everything. There's like no one key. Like you can't, I'm not going to give you an answer. You just consider everything and look at the whole picture and then you'll get it. Um, <laughs> and then I want to shout out no pause tournaments, uh, for sponsoring me. Cause that's really sick. Oh, Cause what? every time the, the, I got to do MPT. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't realize that was an actual sponsor. Okay. Yeah, I changed no, your no, info. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. MPT. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, a, I'm a both. I'm a player commentator model for no pause tournaments. Oh. <laughs> Of course. Um, it's really great having them because I'll go to a tournament and I'll, for myself, think I underperformed and they'll send me a message and be like, hey, saw your results, really proud of you. And that's like, <laughs> that yeah, like helps the, the blow a little bit. Or like people will be like, ah, Jack, you got to go to this tournament. And I'm like, I am broke. I'm like, I cannot afford to go to this tournament. And then they go, you have a sponsor. And I go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah it's so funny <laughs> maybe you know there's probably a jersey in your future at some point and then maybe that'll help you remember because you'll see it in your yeah. class and you'll go i don't know if i want to wear that today but like you know maybe i'll go to a melee event i'll wear it yeah they gotta let me just, I, I really would just want a varsity jacket i think that'd be so much sicker mm, yes actually, it can, gonna, it can come message. off if necessary yeah. i mean in the one moosh picture i was just like the shirt came off anyway so the jersey wouldn't do you much good there either and i won that set i lost the one when i was shirted when i was clothed it was not looking hot it was looking hot it was too fucking hot Take out the shirt we won. <laughs> That's, i just i'm glad i'm glad there's a picture but there are a few videos where somebody takes off their shirt and everybody freaks out and gets hype and it's just like it's so funny it doesn't have to happen every time it does it does not have to happen every time don't ask me to do it if i'm losing a set but you know when it happens it's fun all Mm -hmm. right well thank you so much god touch for joining me and thank you for the improvement advice that's always helpful to me and we'll get you going here and for all of the people tuning in thank you for joining me oh uh and god touch don't go anywhere after the outro is done playing we need to do a thumbnail thing but okay. to everybody who tuned in and is listening and watching in thank you so much for joining us we'll see y'all next time hey, goodbye no, that was a lot of fun awesome glad to hear it we can do a part two i think i think that'd be good we only did 30 minutes this time indeed it is tough i had to i had to do that with Lod as